Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Mohamed Sane, a state enrolled nurse. Uh, we are here to bring you a show on Singside TV every Wednesday. So today, the topic that I want to discuss with people is uh, NCDs. When we say NCDs, NCDs means non-communicable disease. And when we say non-communicable disease, we say these are disease conditions that can be transmitted from one person to another through not having direct contact to the person. That there are these conditions that are mainly not transmitted to, through infection or through bloody fluid or other things. And what are these NCDs? Uh, example of these NCDs you have this have to be cardiovascular problems, conditions like let's say CVA means cerebral vascular accidents. You also have hypertension, you also have uh, diabetes, you also have cancers, and then you also have other uh, so on, etc. And etc. According to WHO, it says uh, around almost around 40, 41 million people died every year from these NCDs. And among the people that are affected mostly are these old age people and these kids. The topic that I want us to take that going to center on this course on is going to be on uh, diabetes. When we said diabetes, uh, many locally we know it as our local nyungko in the country about the uh, When we say diabetes, diabetic this is a metabolic disorder whereby the pancreas is not able to produce little or no insulin or even it produces the insulin, the body, the cells are not able to accept or use that insulin that has been produced. Now there are different types of diabetes, different school of thoughts, but the, most, the ones that are most common are two. You have type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Other books might also have cases on diabetes, symptomatic diabetes and so on. But the most common one or that are most common is called type 1 diabetes and of course type 2 diabetes. When we say type 1 diabetes, also known as after juvenile diabetes. When we say juvenile diabetes, it means what? It disturbs all youthful age people. Example, or like let's say children or people that are from 30, 30 years down or 35 years down, those are people that are mostly disturbed by this type of diabetes. Also, at times we also call it juvenile diabetes as well. And then when we say type 2 diabetes, is uh, this also another type of diabetes that disturbs, let's say, old age group. It's not that much common, but the most common one in this uh, article, in the, in, especially in the Gambia, is type 2 uh, diabetes. It disturbs these old, old age people. Now, how do you know that this person is having diabetes? Uh, you have to go to the hospital and then they have to check what we call your blood sugar. And blood sugar, we have fasting blood sugar. You also have random blood sugar. When we say FBS means fasting blood sugar, means it means this is a test that is done from like the person have not, the, the time the test is been done and the last time the person ate is almost eight hours. That's the, that's the time you can call it fasting blood sugar. But does not necessarily mean this test can only be done in the morning. Even at night, can be done. But it has to be like the, the last time the person ate and the time that the test has been done is going to be exactly eight hours. Now, fasting blood sugar, uh, others will tell you from 3.5 to 7.1 or 3.0 to 7.1 is, is, is what to call is a normal fasting blood sugar range. And then random blood sugar will tell you from 7.5 to 11.1 or 11.0. Anyway, you see those things, article, those are reading, means the person is, might not be suffering from diabetes. But again, uh, if the person blood sugar is more than that, let's say the person comes with fasting blood sugar and the person blood sugar is, let's say, 4.5, at that point, you cannot die, diagnose the person at article half in check. So maybe you say the person can come tomorrow again, you check again, and the person, if the person has more, then means you have to take out that person might be as far as having what, pre-diabetes. Uh, now we said random blood sugar. When we said random blood sugar, as I said, is what I call where, where the person have already eaten. And within that stage, within that eight hours, and then you check the person blood sugar, and the blood sugar estimated to about 7.5 up to 11.0. If it's more than that, mean the person is suffering from uh, diabetes. So many, might have this illicit what causes diabetes uh, you cannot know exactly what causes diabetes i will say it's a non-communicable disease so you might not say per se like let's even come example when it says uh, uh how to call it uh, hiv hiv is caused by a virus like exactly it's caused by a virus so diabetes is not like because it's a non-communicable disease so the exact cause is, is not known but then there are things that are risk factor whereby whenever that person has that exposed to having uh, that non communicable disease called diabetes. Example, your parents' genetics or genes, your parents has diabetes. You stand at a very high chance of having uh, diabetes as well. Or you, 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 you have some problem that have to do with how to call it your liver or your pancreas also. Huh? You also stand at a very high risk of having how to call it uh, 
diabetes. Now, how can you prevent yourself from having diabetes? What you need to do is, in every treatment that you do, you have what you call pharmacological treatment and non-pharmacological treatment. When we say pharmacological treatment, this is whereby you have to do with drugs and other uh, 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 therapies where you have to do with medications. Now, when we say non-pharmacological means the person has to do with that, have to do with diet and then the way the person lives. Now, we as nurses, what we advocate for more is the person had to call it a non-pharmacological treatment. One is the diet that we eat. Yes, sugar cannot cause diabetes. We all testify that sugar cannot cause diabetes. But again, excessive sugar of that we consume also is not good for our body. Uh, we said as a man, you should at least take 30 teaspoons, like let's say in breakfast, if you have breakfast, you have three, lunch also three, and dinner is also three. Means a man should take that. And as a woman, they say you should take at least six. Means if, if, if a man is taking, I to call it three, a woman should take two. Why? Simply because as we are men, males are what? As a male, uh, we uh, in, always engage ourselves in exercises or activities that we are able to, to call it uh, sweat and then we are able to or, or reduce or burn fast in our body. But females have that less, uh, like a basic uh, uh, lifestyle, sorry for that, uh, like sitting, eating, just sitting, not doing other exercises. So now uh, we say sugar cannot cause diabetes. But then consuming a lot of sugar also might put you at a very risk, high risk factor. That is one. And two, as I say, genetics, if your family member, one of your family member has, has that, you also stand at a very high chance of having uh, autocolic diabetes as well. And then uh, the other one that I said as well, also if you have a problem with your kidney or a problem with your autocolic uh, uh, pancreas, also you stand at a very high chance of uh, having diabetes. So these are the things that basically we, we always uh, engage ourselves on. As we said, uh, NCDs are non-communicable disease. WHO says, study six review, it says in every two seconds, the person die as a source of what is NCDs. That is one. It also says 85 percent of premature deaths are as a result of uh, these NCDs. These NCDs also disturb more of low income or medium earners. Like they say, the Gambia, uh, we most of us are low income earners. 17 million of people died from NCDs in every year. So this non-communicable disease, uh, we need to do our best to make sure that at least any time uh, the food that we consume especially this this this, this pack food that we always import like this, this this canned foods we really really need to be very much careful about that so as i said diabetes uh, is we have almost the the, the the most common ones are type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes 80 percent of the public of obese people normally have type 2 diabetes and 20 percent are non-obese diabetes there are other types that my we always know that are gestational diabetes, diabetes mellitus associated with other illnesses or syndrome. Those are all types of uh, diabetes that we might always uh, be uh, talking of as well. Now, what are the clinical manifestations? Like when we, when we say the signs and symptoms of, uh, we call them the three P's. You have polyuria, polyphagia, and polydipsia. When we say polyuria, means the person always have urinate much especially at night. The person will spend the whole night, people are sleeping, the person is moving from every time, getting from bed and going to urinate. So we said uh, polyphagia means the person always hungry. And polydipsia is increase in taste, means the person is always thirsty. So these are things, that these are three main clinical signs of, uh, of diabetes. Whenever somebody is manifesting or going along with all or having circulation dose signs, the person need to visit a, a nearest health center. At times also, you might have uh, uh, dehydration, you might have fatigue, you might have, how uh, to call it, blue vision, you might also have, how uh, to call it, weight loss and other things. So at times you might also have drink clean, you might also have a, a dry skin, vomiting, and but then the main common signs and symptoms of that are uh, what we call the three P's, polydipsia, polyphagia, and of course, uh, polyuria. So what I call it, summary of diabetes signs and symptoms, the main summary, it's abbreviation, we call it a diabetes as well, that is D-I-A-B-E-T-E-S. When we say the D stands for drowsiness and weakness due to starvation of the what, of the cells. Means, I call it, the cells are being starved because they are not able to have enough glucose or able to do their work. Now, you also have the eye that is itching of the skin, anus, vulva, and impotence. Whenever you have diabetes, especially it affects your, I to call it, your, your reproduction, uh, uh, I call it, uh, system. Means especially if you're a man, you're not able to produce, uh, your sperm will not be able, uh, sperm will not be, able to, uh, be used and uh, to, uh, to call it offer an uh, offspring. 
It's also a positive family history and always having his feeling test and hungry. Means out of your family members, or especially your mom and or your dad has uh, diabetes, you also stand at a very high chance of having diabetes and you always feel hungry and also testy or also dead. And also blood vision unclear means at times you will feel like you are not seen clearly. Uh, blue vision, as I said, and also uh, a train tiredness or tingling of the and uh, numbness of the hands or feet means at times you will feel tingling, your hands will be numbed. Like numbness means like whenever you, even if you touch your body, you feel like that place or oh, it's not been adequately that much uh, uh, okay. And also easy fatigue or tiredness. You do exercise, you walk small, you, you feel fatigue easily. Just from here to you feel as easy. And also slow wound healing. Most people that have diabetes, uh, it takes long before their wound will uh, will heal. So basically, these are things. And as I said, uh, for you to be able to know uh, the fasting process, as I said, is from saving point zero or more. I mean, the fasting should be tested of uh, having how to call it uh, diabetes. A random blood sugar is eleven from saving point zero to eleven is random blood sugar. The management of diabetes, as I said, uh, how do you manage diabetes? We put it into so many folds. We have nutritional management. We have exercise and other said uh, article monitoring of your BM, your blood sugar, and of course pharmacological and non pharmacological uh, treatment. So, the nutritional management aspect of it, as I said, you, you have what diet, nutrition, that's the diet that you intake. You have to reduce the, 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 the sugar intake that you are taking every day. And the weight control, you also have to control your weight. You have to also control your weight, of course. And the most important diet and nutritional management is what, to control total calorie. I mean, the calorie that we always intake, huh? we know we should always have to control that as well because it helps to adequate. Uh, when you're taking a lot of calories, it increases your body weight and that might put you in the high risk of getting uh, exposing yourself into other diseases. And the other thing, as I said, uh, the it provides unnecessary food content. You have meeting optimal energy requirements, I mean, taking energy foods that will help you to boost like fruits and other things. Even fruits, the way we take it also, we also have to reduce it. Exercise is one of the best treatment of any disease conditions. Somebody who is, who is doing constant exercise, that person might not be able, uh, will stand at a very low risk of having any NCDs. So exercise in particular does not necessarily mean you have to go to the uh, gym, pulling, lifting, or you have to go to the field running. No, even walking 30 minutes, walking. The best exercise that you can do is walking. And the best exercise that can do to burn fast is walking. You walk 30 minutes, or at least you walk, walk at least one kilometer, or at least you walk, 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 walk at least uh, two kilometers, every day at least that helps to burn fat and at least that helps your body to be able to burn calories monitoring your glucose uh we need to have at least a bm machine as in the family if you don't have it you can be constantly going to the hospital at least three times in a week to go and check your blood sugar to know how far your blood sugar is the most common drug that we use here in the gambia that government hospitals or, or health centers or uh, that normal that, that they have is what glabin calamine and of course metformin these are two main other uh, quality drugs that we normally use. At times also you see people having a specific sugar, they say this sugar is diabetic sugar. No, there is no prescribed medication or that other quality sugar that we say this is sugar is specifically for patients that have diabetes. The best thing that you have to do is just to control your diet and then be taking your medication as a, a, a prescribed. With that, it will help you to be able to uh, control your diet. And of course, and glyphen calamide uh, always come with five milligram and then and the metformin come with 500 milligrams and all of them are taken daily, I mean once in a day for you to be able to prevent yourself from having uh, this. Complications or things that might like if, if your diabetes is, uh, is untreatable or you don't treat it, one, you can have hyperglycemia. When we said hyperglycemia, it means when your blood sugar is very, very high and that might lead to damages of other things in your body. You have ketoacidosis, you have hypoglycemia also, means when the blood sugar is very, very low, and then it will also lead, lead to uh, death of some brain cells because they need sugar for them to be. And also diabetic septic food, when it's gangrene, obviously they're going to amputate it. Amputate means they go to cut totally that part and take it on man that might lead to a handicap and other things. And of course, renal failure and non ketogenic uh, hyposoply, hyperglamis that need to for you to be able to uh, again. So these are things that we really need to uh, uh, focus on and in our diet, our lifestyle, we need to change daily exercise and then eating food goods that are very, very good and then doing exercise need to help us to be able to uh, abstain ourselves or getting from these uh, NCDs. So this is what we uh, uh, have, have for you today. We want to thank the 
management, I don't know, of course, the, 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 the sole provider or director that is uh, Ibrahim Jai of Farafini will thank him for coming up with this initiative of telling or able to talk to people using us help personnel able to talk to our people and then sensitize them about this NCDs as uh, this local there is a famous chain that normally says how the prevention is better than curing in our local language all of the are Fagarumo Gen 5. So we tell him thank you all listeners. If you have any question you can just drop it on the comment section. The next time whenever we go over it you will be able to consider. And in case if you have suggestions or so things that you think we need to improve on or, or topics that you think are things that are disturbing more people more you can also put it in our comment section and inshallah our next uh, uh, article sitting Wednesday you will see you all right thank you so very much